In today's video, we're going to take this somewhat mediocre scene and we're going to improve the aesthetics by adding lights and torches so that it looks like this. Hi, my name is Michael. Welcome to my 2D action and adventure RPG tutorial series. Follow along and learn how to create your own ARPG in Godot 4 using GD Script. All right, in today's video, this is the first of several where we're gonna start building this boss encounter that I'm showing here, complete with this energy attack, some, some little orb attacks that he shoots out, the uh, boss health bar that you see below. And of course, what we're gonna be doing in today's tutorial is building the lighting and setting up the level to look the way it does here with these torches and the ambient lighting effect. Okay, so if this is something you're interested in, then you're in the right place and we'll go ahead and get started right now. So in order to decorate this boss room we've got here, and you're going to need to create your own. So I've created in my dungeon set of levels, this C04, and it's just a room with a door. Okay. And, um, let me test this and make sure I got it set up correctly here. Just run this room. Okay. So just a simple room. Okay. Uh, so what we want to do is we want to give this room kind of an ambiance and a mood to set the stage for the boss battle. And obviously what we're doing here could be used for any other purpose. It doesn't have to be for the boss battle that I'm building, but we'll just kind of use this as an opportunity to learn how to do some basic 2D lighting in the Godot engine. So I'm going to go to my file system and we're going to get the assets that we need to build a torch object that we can place in the scene. So let's go down under our props folder. And in here, let's just create a new folder and I'll call it torches. Eventually, oop, I don't want all caps on. Eventually we might have more than one, right? Different styles, but for now we'll just create the one. So because this is a pretty straightforward object, I'm not going to create subfolders for all the different assets. So I'm just going to, I'm going to go ahead and open this in the Explorer. So you can either download the wizard boss zip file that I have on my itch.io page and get assets from that, or you can use your own. And I'm going to obviously use the wizard assets. And if you open that zip file and extract it, you'll see in there a torch PNG. So just go ahead and copy and paste that and then go back to Godot. Okay. So there we go. We've got this torch PNG and I'm gonna go ahead and create a new scene in this folder and we'll call it torch. And then maybe for a type, we'll call it underscore dungeon so that we know we've got this dungeon style torch. And then later you might have different types of torches that will reuse some of the same functionality potentially. Okay. So this scene is going to be pretty straightforward. Um, so it's just a node 2d and the base is fine. And let's add a few things. We need a sprite 2d and we're also going to want a static body 2d so that it can, you know, block the player. Cause this is going to be a torch that sits on the ground and we're going to need an animation player. And we're also going to need a light cause this, we want this torch to light up the scene. Okay. So for that, we're going to look for the point light 2d and we'll add one of those. All right. Now, some of these aren't going to work quite yet or make much of a difference, especially on, on this blank scene, but let's go to our sprite and come to our file system and grab that torch texture. And as you can see, it's five frames. So I'm going to go to animation and say horizontal frames five and starting on one is good. And then of course, you know, this bottom being the origin, um, I want to drag my sprite up so that the bottom of the sprite texture kind of intersects with that more or less. Okay. That way, when the player goes behind this point, he'll be behind the sprite. Then let's configure our sprite body 2d. Now, before we add our collision shape, let's just go ahead and set up the collision. This should be on our, whatever layer we have to block our player. So layer five for me, or not, not mask, but layer, layer five, and then clear all the masks. That way the player will bump into this and then let's add a collision shape. 2d. So this is all kind of stuff we've hopefully done before, and I'm going to use the capsule shape and then I'm going to rotate it. So you can just use this rotate tool and kind of hold uh, control to constrain that. And then I'm going to resize it just a little bit. Okay. So there we go. 
we've got this collision shape. Now, if we go back to our scene four, and I'm going to do shift control A and add torch dungeon and just place one in the middle of the scene, then we should be able to see if this is more or less working. Okay, so here we go. So there's my player and you can see the collision shapes working and I've got the torch behind or in front of the player appropriately based on how I placed it. So if you test that and for some reason that doesn't look or work quite right, then you can come back in here and adjust it accordingly, okay? The next thing we can do that's really simple is come to this animation player and let's add a new animation and we'll just call it default. We'll set it to the default. And really all we need to do to animate this is come to our sprite and just click on the frame. And we'll just click through until, let's see. Let me zoom in so I can see this a little bit better. Click on the frames until we get a repeating one. Then we know we've hit our limit. And then that's really fast. You saw that animation playing really fast. I'm going to go ahead and select these and say scale selection. I'm going to just maybe double it to two. That seems a, like a pretty good speed. Now, now this animation is designed to loop. So if I turn on looping and end it at whatever frame we're on right here, uh, let's see if I select just that frame 0.2667. Okay, so now if we play this through, it'll just loop. That actually still looks a little fast, doesn't it? I'm going to go ahead and, and adjust this one more time. And I'll probably just double it again and uh, see how this looks. Okay, let's play that back again. That's okay. Could maybe be a tiny bit faster, but I'm not going to nitpick too much right now. So I'm just going to go ahead and save that. So then if we run the scene, now our torch is animated, okay? Making it making it look a little bit better, which that's nice. So what we really want with this torch though, is we want the ability for the torch to have that point light, emit a light so that we can light the scene. And, you know, I'll just say right up front, obviously our scene is like fully lit. That's by default how things look. So before we add the light for our torch scene, why don't we go ahead and darken our dungeon room. And what we can do to darken this is we can come in here and add a directional light 2D. And you can see that that lightens up the room, right? <clears throat> but you can also use these directional lights to darken areas. And so what we can do is we just need to change a few of these light 2D settings here. So we can change the color of the light source right? Which, I mean, that's really bright. That's still not what we want because that's because because this is still brightening the scene. Um, but you can see how that color affects it. And we actually do want a little bit of a color because I want, I want it to feel like dungeon lighting. So I'm actually going to pick kind of a, a greenish gray kind of a color, maybe, maybe something like this. Okay. And then we'll leave the energy low. Well, we can try this. I mean, the energy just brightens or darkens the light, right? Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and leave that at one right now. And then the blend mode, if we change this to add, subtract, or mix, we get a different um, style of light. So subtract is going to darken it by the opposite of the color, which is a little bit confusing, but you might, might want to use that for certain things. But then there's also mix, which is kind of just like adding the color on top. You can see how that's working. And so mix is pretty ideal for what we're going to do here. And I'm just going to drop this to 0 0.8. And then maybe the color is a little bit too green. So I'm going to drag this or I could go to the HSV and take the saturation down a little bit. Okay. So it's a little bit more gray. Yeah. And you can see if we darken this color, it, it darkens how it affects the room as well. So I'm just going to pick a kind of a gray color like that. So there we go. So now the room has been darkened by adding this direction light 2D. Okay. So let's go back. Let's go ahead and save that. And actually, let's run the game just so you can see what that looks like real quick. Now, you could darken this all the way to black if you wanted to. You can see our player and our torch are being darkened by it. Um, the reason I'm not going to go all the way to dark black is I'm not trying to create like a realistic lighting where the player can't see where they're going, although that could be what you do. Instead, what I'm going for here is more of a mood lighting. 
Okay, so that's why I'm not doing a completely dark lighting. All right, so let's go back to our torch scene and we can see that our point light isn't fully configured. And so we've got this warning here that it needs a texture. So let's come to our texture and let's create a new gradient 2D texture. Okay, and I'm gonna go ahead and while we're here, just drag this right up to kind of center over the, you know, the heart of that little fire there. Now this texture, let's work on this a little bit. We want the texture to have a radial fill and we're going to go from 0 0.5, 0 0.5 to 1, 0 0.5. Okay, that's going to give us a nice gradient that goes all the way to the edge. And then let's increase this size to 256 by 256 pixels. And now we've got a basic fill and, and you can see based off of this bounding box, the size of the light. And if I save this and come over to scene four, you can see what it's doing. Okay. Which doesn't look great because it's dark in the center and bright on the edges. And it's also a torch. So we kind of want it to be kind of orange looking. So let's come back over here to our gradient and let's just adjust the gradient stops. So this first stop actually should be the one that's white, right? So we'll go ahead and do that. And I'm going to drag it over here. Let's add another stop and let's make this uh, color kind of a yellow color. There we go. I don't like this version of the color wheel. Let's just go to the VHS circle. Okay, so I'm going to pick a kind of yellow, yellowy orange, make it very bright, fully saturated. Okay, and that's a good stop right there so that our fire light is going to be kind of yellow to orange. So we'll pick another color here and we'll make it a nice orange, orangey red color. And then we're going to need maybe two more frames. Let's do one that's dark, dark red like that. And then the last one, we'll make it black. Anything that's black in this texture is not going to light at all, right? It's just not going to affect. So now we've got a nice kind of orange to, or white to orange fade in our gradient. Then if we come back again to our scene four, we can see what that does. So that's kind of a cool torchy effect, right? And let's run, go ahead and run this and just see what it looks like in action. There you can see when our player is close to it, he gets well lit. And as we go off, it fades out. Okay. That actually looks pretty good. Um, but I want to do one other thing with this because I want the light to flicker kind of with the animation of the flame. Let's come back to our file system in the torch torches folder, or actually we could do it from here if we go to our torch scene. So let's come in here and let's create a new script and we'll call it torch light flicker clicker call flicker flicker there we go and let's go ahead and just put this on our point light 2d here now when we open this script it's going to be pretty basic we need the script to not extend a node but instead it should extend a point light 2d because that's what we're going to use this script for is for kind of adjusting point lights and we're going to go ahead and delete this process function and we're going to have a ready function. Okay. But actually let's go ahead and leave the pass in there for now. What we're going to do is we're going to create a simple function that we'll call flicker. And what this, what this function is going to do is it's going to set kind of like a random, um, change on this light. Now we can do things like adjust the scale or we can adjust the energy, right? If we look at this light and we, and we come down here and adjust the energy down, then it gets dimmer or it could get brighter, right? And what I would like to do is maybe adjust both. So let's start by adjusting the energy. So we'll just make the energy equal to a random float, which is going to be a number between zero and one. And then we're going to multiply that by 0 0.1. Because we only, so that'll give us a random number between 0 and 0 0.1. Because we want the change on the energy to be very small. Because it doesn't require a lot to get this flicker. And if we do too much, it'll be kind of like a strobe light effect. And uh, if you want that, you can do that, but I don't. And then we'll just add that random number to 1. Okay. Uh, in fact, let's just add that random number to 0 0.9 maybe. So that the max is 1. And then we'll come down here to our next line and we will adjust the scale. And we're going to set the scale equal to a new vector 2 of 
and we'll just say one and one, which probably doesn't make a lot of sense. So that's regular scale, right? 100%. But then we'll just multiply this by the energy. Since our energy is going to be a number close to one, then our scale is going to be a number close to one. It'll be like anywhere between 90% and 100% scale. Okay. And then what we'll do is we're going to await and we'll just do, we'll just use the get tree create timer to, to do this here. So we'll say get tree dot create timer. And then I'm going to set this equal to roughly, let's look at our animation. Actually, let's go to our animation player. If we look at these, the timing on these, we've got 0 0.1333 is the, is the time of, of one keyframe. And I kind of want this to sync up with the keyframe. So we'll just say 0 0.1333 like that. So it'll be a quick timer and then we'll say dot timeout. Okay. There we go. So we're just going to wait for that timeout to happen. And then what we'll do is we will call flicker again. Now you can't call a function cannot call itself unless it's asynchronous like this, because otherwise you're going to, you're going to have like a never ending loop, right? That just calls through, but because we've got this await, we can. And in order to kick this off, we just now need to call the flicker function in our ready. And then if we go to scene four and hit F6 to run this, there we go. We can see that our light is scaling and has a slight change in energy that tends to sync up with the animation of the torch. Okay. Now, if we go back to our scene, all we really need to do is let's just drag a couple of these one to each corner like so, and then let's run one more time and see the final result of our dungeon, our boss dungeon. And there we go. Now, because each of these lights is going to run that script independently, they're each going to get a different random setting. So they're each flickering at a different, you know, size and uh, they, they don't all match up. They're not, they're not all in sync. So I think it looks pretty good. So pretty simple little tutorial here. In the next step, we're going to be creating some other uh, modular assets that we can use for our boss fight. And they can also be used for, you know, any scene that you want to. So for example, we're going to create like an energy ball that fires and then just heads to the direction of the player. And another energy beam that makes a horizontal line across the screen, okay, that the player has to dodge. So we'll be building those. So if you want to see those, make sure you're, you're subscribed to the channel so you can see when they come out. And uh, if you enjoyed this content, if you learned something, please give it a like or leave a comment below. And thank you everybody for following along and we'll see you next time.